Hello and welcome to my podcast. I'm Marcia, also known as Very Little. And today I'm going to be talking all about knitting. And I have a few acquisitions, so let's get into it. A lot of you will already be aware who watched this previously. I am currently working through a bunch of designing projects and re-knitting some projects as well. One of the projects that I have been re-knitting is my Pasqua shawl. So here's how far it is. Last time I saw you, I was down in here and I've gotten this section done. I may have even started this section, but like just barely. So I have my third section complete and it's looking really good. I'm loving how it's working out. I'm just making sure that there are no errors in the pattern and that it is consistent. So this is going to be continued to be worked on until it is finished. I've kind of started listing what I need to do and what I need to accomplish each day to get each of these knits complete. So I kind of have an idea of where I need to be to get everything done. This yarn that I'm using is really beautiful yarn. It is by Black Cat Custom Yarn. And there's three different colors. What it's all workhorse sock, which is a 80% superwash blue face luster and 20% nylon. Void Talon is one of the colors. And that's the dark color here. Widowmaker is the medium color there. And black raspberry cheesecake is this color right here. This is a pattern that can be knit in just one straight color or you can do three colors or it looks really, really beautiful in a single, single color wool mice yarn. I was one of my test knitters, original test knitters knit it in that. And so they're, they're big skeins, but it goes from one color and goes out to a totally different color. And that is also a really beautiful way of doing the shawl. It's a pie shawl, so it's knit in the round. And there is lace charts with it as well. I think two of the charts are going to need a bit of an edit and the written pattern on one section needed something swapped. So it's a good thing that I was knitting through this and I'm really happy with it. It's enjoyable and there's enough going on to keep me interested. And it's coming along very nicely. I'm enjoying it a lot. It's nice to be knitting on that again. I mentioned a couple episodes ago that I was going to be knitting something that wasn't my design. And I never talked about the pattern and I'm not I'm not going to talk about the pattern that I had chosen, but it had like all different charts and you had to refer to the charts and then refer to the pattern in each section. So it was a lot. And I just didn't do that pattern because it's just too much for me right now. I need something easier. I haven't pulled it out yet. So I still need to pull that out and re repurpose the yarn, find a different pattern. It's a, um, it is a sport weight and it was, the pattern was actually for a cardigan with a lot of lace. And that's why I had so many charts. I should have known. I, it's been in my two knit pile for three years, but I, I just haven't gotten to it. So I'm taking it out of my two knit pile now that I know I'll use the yarn for something totally different. So that's going to happen. I have some secret knitting that I can't show you because it's something that's going to be coming up. I also have been working on my hoodie. The hoodie design will be coming out soon. Just finishing up with the test knitters. We should be finished like a week and a half into February. So there's still a couple of weeks left of the test knit. I think, yeah, about two weeks left of the test knit. And it's coming along really well. I am now on the hood. The last time you saw it, I was just below the pocket and I finished the bottom piece there. And now I'm onto the hood 
It's really easy, this part. It's just back and forth stockinette, and I'm really enjoying it. The yarn I am using is Remix, Barocco Remix Light. So it is 30% nylon, 27% cotton, 24% acrylic, 10% silk, and 9% linen. It is a recycled fiber, so it takes a lot of different fibers from other areas, recycles them into this beautiful yarn. I have probably four more sweaters worth of this yarn because I enjoy it so much. I don't know I don't know what it is about it that I enjoy so much, but I do. It's got a bit of a a tweediness to it. When I first started knitting with this, I was picking out the little tweedy bits, which are like little bits of silk, I believe. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm just leaving it because I got out of the habit of it because I can be a picker. It's coming along so beautifully. I'm keeping it in my bag close to me so I can work on it when I'm at pick up and drop off for the kids and just trying to get it done. That's one of the things that I have a, a list of what I need to complete and I'm trying to put it all in my planner so that I can have goals each day regarding my knitting. So that That is it for the knitting content, but I wanted to talk about, which is super fast, I know, those are the things I've just been working on and I've been doing a lot of other, 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 but I really need to get back to the, to the knitting. Well, two days ago, let's back up to about a week ago, I got a call, well, a text message from a friend who said that his dad was cleaning out a friend's place and they had some, they had a spinning wheel and a weaving loom and a whole bunch of other fiber related things and they know I'm into the fiber arts so asked if I could give his dad a hand with if I'm not interested in it maybe finding a market for it or telling him prices kind of thing so the other day about three days ago I went and met up with his dad and took a look at everything and I didn't know what kind of loom it was or anything and so I went into the basement. There's all this knitting stuff, or all this weaving and spinning stuff. And I told them right when I saw the loom, I can't afford to buy this, but this is like a good starting point for the spinning wheel. And this is a good starting point for the loom. You could probably sell it for around $1,000, just the loom. It's beautiful. It's a Leclerc and I think it's called a, know me i haven't found a plate on it but uh somebody who follows me on instagram said they have the same one and put it down so i'm i think that's what it is it looks like that so <laughs> it's this beautiful large loom it's in beautiful beautiful condition they just wanted it gone they said we would like to sell it but we don't want the hassle of selling it. So can we just sell it to you wholesale? We don't care if you take it and resell it and make money. We don't care. We just, if, if you don't take it next week, it would be going to the dump. I said, okay, let me go get some money. And I purchased a spinning wheel. I purchased a weaving loom. I purchased probably, there's probably a hundred books that came with it. They're like, here, take all of this too. And if we find more, we'll give you more. So there's tons, there's, there's a lot of books on weaving, tapestries, uh, needlepoint, knitting. I pulled out these two books because I actually really like the sweater on the front of this one. It's a cardigan, but it has this cool collar. So I think that might be something that will be joining my wardrobe. And then there's this little one. They're both Rowan. A lot, there's a lot of color work. It's very 80s, very, very 80s. And I dig it. <laughs> I'm really, like the sweaters in it are long and it's very, they're very oversized, which I really love. This one's really long and oversized that I'm wearing right now. I bought this, I did not get it. It's just 
super fun. And there's lots of, there's lots of sizes too in here, which is cool. I'm just a real fan of this one. I haven't, I haven't spent much time looking at them, but I'm really happy with them. And as I go through things, I'll, I'll show, I'll show them to you. Most of the books though, I feel like I'm going to be donating because I don't really have a need for that many books. I'll keep the knitting ones and some of, I'll keep the weaving ones as well because now I have a loom and those things will probably come in handy and I'll see what I use over the next year or two. Whenever I don't use, I'll either donate or sell. I'm very excited about that. I wanted to let you all know that my pattern for the Dream Fingerless Mittens has been released. There will be a link down below so you can purchase your copy. It's such an easy pattern, such an easy, easy knit. It's using a sock weight yarn. It calls for a two millimeter needle because that's what I use to knit my socks with. And so that's what I used. But you could probably get away with a 2.25 or 2.5, depending on how tight of a knitter you are, because you do want a bit of a dense fabric, because that's what's going to keep your hands warm. It takes one skein. It does not have an actual gusset. There's no increases for the gusset. So that makes that way easier. My test knitters loved it. And everybody just said how how simple it was. And everybody's just really happy with them. So I also am very happy with them. The this this these ones were knit out of Riverstone Yarns in her Rocky Mountain colorway. Because at a distance the Rocky Mountains have lots of purples. So so if you're interested, you can go and pick those up on Ravelry. My webpage is still being worked on and this pattern is getting sent over there to be put onto the webpage. And yeah, so that's that. Now that's the end of the knitting content. So if you want to support the podcast, there's lots of ways down below, and that includes purchasing some of my beautiful patterns and knitting them up. Also, there is, I'm getting my Patreon page set up right now, so there's going to be some merchandise available over on Patreon once everything gets set up. I set up two different tiers so far with merchandise. The third tier, I couldn't, it just brought up a blank screen so I was giving it a couple of days and then to go back in and fix it. So if you're interested in, in supporting through Patreon as well, you can do that too. That's that for that. Thanks for joining me. Now on to jibber jabber. Last week I had food poisoning and I didn't know if it was food poisoning or if it was COVID because some of the symptoms overlapped, but I did not have a fever. So that was, that was one big clue to me that it wasn't COVID is because there was no, because there was no fever whatsoever. Having said that, because of the symptoms I had, I had to call our emergency line and find out if I qualified for a test, which I did. And once you call the line, if you qualify for a test, you have to self-isolate. So I went into self-isolation right away and that that night when I was like really sick, I just went online and found that you can book a COVID test online. So I booked it for first thing in the morning the next day. And I went in and I did the COVID test. And here we just have like this, it's a mouth. Um, you slosh it around in your mouth and gargle and slosh and gargle and slosh and spit. If you don't like gargle, slosh and spit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but so, there's a different test that other people get as well. But this is like a saline solution test that I had. I got my results the next day in the morning, pretty much first thing. It was negative. It was food poisoning. So last week when I heard about the loom, it was like, 
the day before or two days before I got food poisoning because so I wanted to contact another friend about the loom and then I got sick and then I was like isolation I felt yucky <laughs> and so two days ago I called and met up with everybody about met up with the gentleman about the loom and it's so pretty I'm super happy with it. There's so many things I wanted to talk about today that I cannot remember. I've been really trying to get onto a schedule that is doable. One thing that I've been working on is like work-life balance. The thing is, is that I tend to make lists of what I need to do in a day and I just cram the day and then I get overwhelmed and then I don't do anything. <laughs> Or I do one or two things. So what I'm trying to work on, and let me know if you do this or if you don't do this or what what uh, what you do to stay organized because it's something that I definitely struggle with. So what I'm trying to do right now is I've made a master list of all the things I need to do and then I'm plunking them into days to get them done. I'm recording this Wednesday and it has to go up for tomorrow. Normally I would record this on Monday, but Monday I was overwhelmed, so I didn't. <laughs> and I did other things instead, and for me, I need to do the recording on Monday because then I can do the editing Monday afternoon, upload it, and then I don't have to worry about it. It's done. So instead, I'm spending Monday, Tuesday, and until I start recording today, thinking about it and worrying about it and adding that to my to-do list is just the mental process of it. When if I would just done it on Monday, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be a thing that I would be thinking of right now. So I have this master list and it's like pages long. Some of them, one page is all about what I need for to do for Ravelry, for the group, for Patreon, for my website, for my patterns with my test knitters. So I've been listing all of that and then putting it into my actual planner. I'll just show you an empty page. putting it into my actual planner and I draw like a little box and then I check it off because I find check marks are very satisfying for me and it's something that I need. But what I've been doing, one thing I've been doing is I will put something on a day and if I don't get it done, I'll add it on top of my day the next day instead of removing something and moving something over. I just add it on top and then I'm trying to like get more and more done in each day and I'm getting overwhelmed. I'm not taking enough breaks. I'm not eating enough food. <laughs> so I really, this is something going into February, I'm going to be working on a lot is trying to keep my tasks manageable and lined up because it's just overwhelming and even my recording tutorials doing that I want I just load up a day of recording tutorials because I'm there I can do it but I should actually be splitting it up and do three on one day and then three on the next day and three on the next day not in the same week like split it up on Thursdays do three tutorials each Thursday, just in the morning. And then do, do, do a different task in the afternoon so it splits it up and it splits my day a little bit better. Yes. So that that is personally what I'm working on right now. And getting some knits off the needles. I have some secret knitting that I started which I can't wait to share with you. I did, um, for the most part, I am a process 
designer so when I'm designing something I end up like I end up ripping it out a few times until I get what it is that I'm looking for what I'm working on right now I've ripped it out three times <laughs> which is a lot of knitting time definitely worth it though and I'm really happy with it so I can't wait to share that with you but I think that's it for me for today. I'm a little bit, today is one of my busy days. I've got to drive back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So I'm going to end this here. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate every single one of you. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week, an amazing weekend. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Until next time.